think you can beat me in soybeans? Forget about it. We do have two tropical storms or hurricanes coming in the Gulf. May get a lot of wind, a lot of rain, so who knows what's going to happen. You know, I'm a sixth generation farmer. Can I keep expanding? What can I do? What am I not doing right? I'm confirmed sixth generation farmer. It's fresh, pretty thin right now, it's just that time of year. It's not gonna be hard to beat Weaver. He's not even in my realm of thoughts. Like, pick out the worst plant. That should be how Weaver's crap looks. They're probably the biggest beans in the United States right now. I got a gun if we run into a gator, too. This has been a tough year, I can tell you that. We got 2,200 acres of corn, and we, got, we had five planters available to plant the corn. Theoretically, that should have took three and a half days, and it took us 53 days to plant 2,200 acres of corn. So that's the kind of weather we've had this year. So we plant everything on what we call a raised bed. And then where I'm standing in these furrows, why we have to have these is because we'll lay poly pipe down the end of this field. But we'll punch a hole in the poly pipe and that water will run to the end of the field, which is then connected to a, a drain. It's a totally different situation than most of the guys, you know, in the Midwest or a lot of guys around that have the pivots and stuff. But we seem to do pretty good with it. The nodules are forming close to the stalk, which is what we like to see in the beginning. <clears throat> and on a V2 plant, to already have that kind of nodule production is pretty impressive. Root system looks good, plant's healthy. Yeah, our biggest limiting factor in soybean production is gonna be the nighttime temperatures here with the humidity. A lot of people have high nighttime temperatures, but not the humidity we have here in the Delta. That the soybean plant, just like any other plant we grow here, cotton, rice, whatever, it has to have time to respire. Now we've been able to you know, overcome that some just with different management techniques that we're doing. We're looking for that miracle drug that'll lower the canopy temperature. We mandatorily fungicide. Not necessarily for disease, but we do it for plant health. You know, if you send your, your kid to school and it's 35, 40 degrees, you're not gonna send him in a, in a t-shirt. You're gonna send him in a coat, maybe a hat and some gloves. And that's kind of the way I look at fungicides on beans. The number one name of the game in any farming operation should be reducing stress. You reduce stress, you increase yields. What we don't have here in the Delta is organic matter. So we have to make sure that our fertility program's really, really good. We'll put out a base rate of chicken litter, which is our organic fertilizer, and we'll hip up a bed and cover, incorporate that fertilizer. We don't want it running off. Uh, we want it all to stay in the place that it's supposed to be. So we do that as a conservation practice and also to get it incorporated into the soil. And then we won't touch this field again until probably February or March. We'll put a burn down application on it at that point and then sometime between then and planting, we'll knock the top off of these beds and uh, plant the seed from there. Man, I think this may be one of the prettiest fields of beans in the state of Arkansas right now. It's, I get to drive by it about four times, five times a week. You smile every time you drive by it because it's just, it's so pretty. It always is. Most everything we do after we lay the poly pipe is, is aerial. You can run over it, but then you're gonna be going behind it, patching it all the time. It's just more efficient to use an airplane at that point in time. Farmers are so bad, including myself, at wanting to front load things. And what we found is we start running out of nutrients late in the season by doing that. So we've started adapting a program of splitting that up more. We've always done it on our nitrogen. Now we're starting to do it on our, um, our potash and, and we seem to be getting the potash at the, at the plant at the right time. Rob always says, you know, you don't get up and eat all the food for your day 
at breakfast. You have breakfast, lunch, and, and supper. You can go the easy way, but Rob's taught me that the easy way is not always the most efficient way as far as uh, if you get to put anything in the bank. And that's what it's all about at the end is what we can take home to, to go another year. You think you're on top of the world one year and then, you know, the weather changes and then you're on the bottom of the world. Like, I spent the last 45 days almost feeling like a failure. You know, simply because I couldn't get my crop planted. 53 days to plant 2,200 acres of corn. I mean, that's unrealistic. But, you know, it comes, and you finally get the weather, and if you just hammer down all the time, you'll eventually get it planted. That's kind of our goal, is just farm hard. Fortunately, I have Rob and Lane and my wife, my daughter-in-law, you know, that I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a team approach. All my employees, most of the guys that work with me on the farm can probably do it as good or better than I can. The way to be successful, I've always thought, is to surround yourself with successful people. One of the better products that we've seen come out here lately is Veltima from BASF. The thing I like about this is how long it's gonna last in that plant. It can give me a longer window to make that decision. I'm really loving it. Veltima has the longest residual of any product out there. Let's control something that we're able to control this year. Veltima reduces stress in the plant, reduces the temperature, happy corn makes more grain. Today's the, what is today, May the 10th, May the 11th, and we're late, it's the 11th. Two years ago, we were completely through, and now on soybeans, we're just about half through. We don't have any what I consider really early beans planted, which is not what I want, but the way it is. We got a lot going on. We got seven or eight things going on. I only have nine employees, so we're stretched pretty thin right now. It's just that time of year. Slowly but surely, we'll get everything done, and uh, it won't be so bad. But this week and the next week's gonna be pretty rough. So we got 10,000 acres, roughly. Uh, 7,000 acres in one block. I consider myself on three farms: 7,000, 1,500, and, and a, another 1,500. So uh, this year we'll have about 5,000 acres of soybeans, 3,000 acres of corn and all those are plus or minus and around 1,500 acres of rice. Yeah, pretty good. Monday morning, everything's going fine. So it's the weather later this week that I'm really kind of concerned about. We can get everything done. It's just uh, the weather's got to cooperate. We got a lot of acres here. I mean, if, it, if, if I just had 1,500 acres or 2,000, you know, we could get it done, but it's hard to be. I want to be large and efficient and productive. That's kind of my drive. There's an old song I kind of like, and one of the verses is, hand on the throttle and eyes on the rail. So that's kind of maybe my motto. Yeah, hands on the throttle, eyes on the rail. So plenty of moisture, rain in the forecast shouldn't be a problem. Three quarters of an inch deep. They should be spaced about two inches apart. There's three seeds, two inches apart. So I'd say that's pretty good. All smiles. Now we're planning on raised beds because uh, this will be irrigated. We'll lay, we'll lay our poly tubing on the high side of the field or the north side of the field and we'll irrigate and gravity will make it fall to the, towards the south. 120,000 seed per acre is what we're shooting for and these planters are really accurate. So, you know, I have an idea where my best fields are. This is being one of them. It's kind of late in the year to have a big number, but we can still break 100 bushels. You know, there, there are areas that'll make 135, 140 bushels. Not in every field, but in some of the better fields, it's not uncommon to, to see something like that. You can make 120 all day long and you hit one spot that makes 85 or even 90, seems like your average is closer to 75. 
I feel good about this. It hadn't been perfect by any means. We planted corn for six weeks. And in those six weeks, we only had five or six good days. Some of those were half days. It, it was a struggle, but we, we managed to get all that done. Now we just gotta take care of it. I'm gonna change this a little bit. Let's get 120 units of the Agrigold and treat it with the, uh, have we been getting it treated? Intego Sweet. Let's do that, let's do 120 units and bring it to Revel Gin. When I just farmed 3,500 to 4,000 acres, you know, I was still pretty attentive, attentive to detail. And then we got so big, I lost some of that attentiveness. So now I'm trying to get back there. And I got the crew that we can do it with, that, that understand the method behind the madness, or the madness behind the method. All right, so we're gonna treat our seed. We're gonna treat it with Intego Sweet, which is the fungicide and insecticide seed treatment. And then we're gonna add an inoculant to it. With, and then we're gonna put a Molly product on it for the molybdenum. Uh, so far, so good. So it's a clean seed that goes in there, falls through the system, which is all autonomized stuff. It runs through the system over there, blends all the, you know, it's got all the color and all the fungicide stuff that has to go on. And then, of course, once it goes through the drum, it goes onto the auger truck, and then from there, we normally take it onto the farmer. Revitech is a brand new product from BASF. We're really excited for that. Revitech is going to be able to help growers stretch yields more than they have in the past. The number one name of the game should be reducing stress. You reduce stress, you increase yield. I'm excited about Revitech. We use it on every acre. We're looking at upwards of 60 days control. It's going to take great farmers and just propel them so much further than we've ever been before. I'm gonna jump on the tractor and take it down there. Lane's gonna go change bearings on the closing wheels on the planter. Supposedly we had bearings just go out all of a sudden in this first pass that we made. And uh, we've had 48 hours since we planted last and you would thought they'd have been out then, but apparently they just went out. So he's gonna go change the bearings and I'm gonna jump on the tractor and do some tillage. And if y'all wanna get on there with me, you're more than welcome to. I'm a little aggravated because because the bears just went out, supposedly. So we're gonna go out here, uh, we're here on the Golden Farm and Matt and them are uh, supposed to get started planting back this afternoon. Uh, had a little rain, about an inch of rain, the day before yesterday. I think they're having to air a little bit of ground out in order to get it planted right now, so I want to see how they're coming. I heard they had some bearings go out on the planter, so Matt will be in rare form when we get there. So. That should be pretty exciting as it is always. You know, I haven't talked to Perry in the last probably 10 days. You know, I don't really know how his weather was last week. I know there were some storms went through northeast Arkansas last week, but I don't, I don't know if they've got him or not. But, you know, he and I are both in the same weather pattern. He's a little bit cooler. Um, than we are, you know, at times, and, you know, at times we're the same. Both kind of farm the same kind of ground, too. You know, I've complained and whined about rain now for about 75 days, and we, the thing I always say about the Delta is we're two weeks from a drought, no matter what. I've got a, a consultant friend of mine, and I said, okay, out of your 64 crops, have you ever seen one this bad this early? And he said, in 1973, we didn't plant a seed in May 1st. He said, but the difference in that and and this year, if we'd have had the kind of equipment y'all have now, we would have never, you know, would have never had to stop. So he said, this is by far the worst one we've had. You 
you can see we're kind of dodging mud holes on the turn road right now. So this is our absolute favorite tool for furrow irrigation. Well, as you can see back here, we're knocking the bed, we're shaving the side of the bed off. And then we've got lifter busters that's made behind it that hip the bed back up. And then you've got those baskets running to fluff the top of the bed to give you some loose dirt. Now, a lot of times if we don't want loose dirt because the wind's blowing hard and the moisture's low, we'll run a flat roller behind this to seal the ground back off. But we're looking for a wide, flat planting surface and a good deep middle. You see how it's making that middle? So we're looking for a good deep middle for the furrow irrigation to go down to. So it, you know, it takes a combination of everything. I wish I was like my buddy Kevin Matthews. You just go out there with a draw bar type planter and no-till and just run around there. You know, that's the easy life. But some of us southern farmers have a hard life. We have to make all these beds so that we can make half the yield that he does. You ask Perry, he probably says prettiest grounds up there. You ask Kevin, they say probably the prettiest ground out there. Probably Kevin really. likes some old river bottoms where he can put that drip irrigation down. Perry's up there and he likes all them pivots to where he can spin them in circles. And boys just need to come on down here and leave it in the sand and learn how to run it down the middle. <laughs> That's really I'd rather have that flat ground pivot. This would be so much easier. These were planted day before yesterday. Some of them are sprouted. Uh, matter of fact, all of them are sprouted. I don't know why it's that deep. Shouldn't be that deep. And it's, it's sprouted. But, you know, that's where, if you're planting deep, because you don't know if you're going to get a rain, see, that's going to get real crusty. This soil here crusts over real, real, real bad. When you can work with your family and your friends, it's not really a job. You know, the, the hard part of farming is the weather, the markets, the government, those things you can't plan but I can plan on him being there every day, Rob being there every day, and being around people that I love. When you can be around people that you love, how's that work? Corey owns a crop consulting company called Advanced Yield, and we've been working with Corey for two years now. Advanced Yield's a lot more catered to customer specific needs, not just everything fits all program. Corey is very competitive. He likes to look outside the box. If you're willing to go outside your comfort zone, there's different things that he'll suggest, but they'll work for you. I might say go for it. So today is the 12th of May and it's raining again. Seems like we work till 10 or 11 o'clock, two days a week, and then the rest of the week we look for something to do. This week's not looking very productive. I think yesterday, well, we've got the, most of the, the easy fields, we're through with them. Every field left for the plant has challenges. It's hard to manage. You've gotta go back. Inevitably, you'll forget about a spot. And a month from now, or a few weeks from now, you'll go back to spray it or fertilize it, and there'll be a spot out there that never was planted because it was wet the first time. The early beans we planted, they're up and looking good, so pretty pleased with that. Still have a ways to go. We got a lot of seed production beans to plant, which is just now time to plant those. Seed production beans, the quality's just that much better. The germ will be good, as well as heavier, bigger, nicer seed. This year hadn't been that bad, and we we're always getting stuck and having to drag chains. And last year, in 2019, we really had a problem getting, getting stuck. The water table was so high, you get stuck when you least expected it. Missy's been here for 10 years plus. She's a big part of this. She's in the office all the time at the flying service and the farm. She takes care of all the bills, anything that comes in. But she kind of knows how I think, so she knows when and what to show me. She never throws anything away. So I can think of the most six months from now or a year from now, 
if I have a need for something really bizarre, if I mention her, she can usually put her finger on it. Keeps that with me. I have been working here for over 10 years. My position, I'm the secretary, also known as the chaos coordinator. Well, the biggest challenge I would say in the last 10 years is the form has grown, is almost doubled. And in addition to that, we went from a one plane operation to a two plane operation. So the flying side also doubled as well. They call me the chaos coordinator because I, I take everything in stride. I may be dog sitting one day, I may be running errands one day, I may be at the granary, and no matter what's thrown at me, I will try my best to get the job done for whatever they need. That's how dedicated Misty is. She's got her rain jacket on, going next door to, to get my dogs away from the cat lady's cat. I mean, when everything gets out, I mean, we look like a John Deere dealership when everybody gets in here. I never thought I'd be out here at this level. The size, I really like it when things go right. And, and I, I think to be able to justify all this equipment, all the technology that comes along with it, the modern technology, you've got to farm sizable acres. My drive is to make good yields or high yields across the whole farm. Not That's what pays the bills, not just the win in a contest. Yeah, that's fun. I do enjoy it. The, the end goal is to make higher yields across the whole farm. Oh, yeah, I enjoy it. I, I wouldn't be out here if I wasn't. I mean, I wake up 4.30 or 5 every morning, and I don't mind staying out here to midnight. Yeah, two or three days of that, I get kind of tired, but that is what drives me, just getting out here and seeing everything. I enjoy the people, I enjoy everyone that works for me, I enjoy everyone I do business with. The biggest issue I had this year, I did not get into any early soybeans, and that is going to hurt on, on the yield. I needed to have some beans planted and well on their way a month ago. much rains we've had and the cooler weather, it's, uh, it, it hadn't happened. Now, yeah, we've got plenty of soybeans planted and we'll make some good yields, there's no doubt. But as far as uh, a super yield to, to win this, Podfathers, that remains to be seen. So my biggest competition in Podfathers, Matt Miles is a strong contender. He's got a lot of support. Matt's really smart and Rob Dedman is an excellent consultant and they, they're a winning combination. I'm not worried about anything. Matt and I are good friends, but, but I would, uh, I feel like he's gonna be the strong contender. He can get a jump on me out of the gate, but like I said, I, I've beat him before, but I've gotta really be on my game. One of the better products that we've seen come out here lately is Veltima from BASF. The thing I like about this is how long it's going to last in that plant. It can give me a longer window to make that decision. I'm really loving it. Veltima has the longest residual of any product out there. Let's control something that we're able to control this year. Veltima reduces stress in the plant, reduces the temperature. Happy corn makes more grain. 